What did Tina Turner do that had Elton John cursing up a storm at her? And why couldn't they get a joint tour off the ground? According to John, there was one key reason for their artistic battles. In his humbly titled autobiography, Me, Elton John recounts how plans for him and Turner to tour together in 1997 began as a nice idea, but quickly turned into a disaster. Granted, this is only John's side of a story about someone he ended up actively disliking, but that doesn't mean it isn't a faithful retelling of events. I shouldn't have done what I did, but she drove me to it. Based on his account, Elton John didn't have to guess why they call it the blues, because Tina Turner gave him the blues herself. He wrote in his book, She didn't like my hair, she didn't like the color of my piano, and she didn't like my clothes. John wrote that she told him, You wear too much Versace and it makes you look fat. She allegedly clashed with his band too, refusing to address the members by name. When they tried to rehearse Proud Mary, Tina kept on burning them with complaints about how bad they were at playing the song. She specifically singled out John himself, he claims. So, he told her where to stick her song and stormed off. Sorry seems to be the hardest word for John, but he apparently has a much easier time with a different S-word. Writing, I've thrown plenty of tantrums in my time, but there are limits. There's an unspoken rule that musicians don't treat their fellow musicians like in 1999, the two superstars tried again to rehearse together for VH1's Divas Live 99, the New York Post reported, but Tina once again didn't need another hero. A stagehand claimed Turner stopped the song to criticize John's playing, and the latter snapped back, Don't tell me how to play piano, and I won't tell you how to sing. Any Elton John fan knows that he's a master of improvisation. He even famously improvised a song using actor Richard E. Grant's oven manual during the 1997 special An Audience with Elton John. But when he was trying to work with Tina Turner, she wasn't having it. He wrote in Me, I went to her dressing room and apologized. She told me that the problem was that I was improvising too much, adding in little fills and runs on the piano. According to John, this was when he realized that the pair simply wasn't compatible, at least not artistically. He wrote, that's how I've always performed. It's part of what I love about playing live. But Tina didn't think that way. Everything had to be exactly the same every time. It was all rehearsed down to the slightest movement. That made it obvious the tour wasn't going to work. John also suggested that Turner's treatment of him might have had less to do with him and more to do with her own negative experiences at the hands of others. He speculated in his book, maybe it was insecurity on her part. She'd been treated appallingly earlier in her career, suffered years and years of being ripped off, beaten up and pushed around. Maybe that had an effect on how she behaved towards people. In addition to her abusive marriage with Ike Turner, Tina Turner faced pushback in America for being a black artist who wanted to break into the traditionally white rock and roll scene. I don't really actually get rock and roll material because there's that, not that much good music out there. As Tanisha Ford, a history professor at City University of New York's Graduate Center, told PBS NewsHour that despite rock and roll being rooted in black music and tradition, the mainstream music industry racialized it as white music. Though John and Turner's onstage partnership simply couldn't gel, the pair still managed to salvage a friendship. John wrote, We made up later. She came for dinner and left a big lipstick kiss in the visitor's book. 